hurricane force winds actually moving through Frederick County, Maryland as we speak. Normal thunderstorms around here, when they become severe, will have 60 mile per hour winds. If you end up with considerable amount of damage, chances are the winds are closer to 70 miles per hour. All of the air that rushes up to power these storms, as it continues to climb vertically, it has to go somewhere. So it rises in the storm, and then it has to go somewhere, so it falls to the ground. Sometimes we can refer to those winds as microbursts. But when you have a line as robust as what we see right here, it's not a microburst. It's really a macro burst because all of these storms are causing air to rise and it's falling at the same time. As it hits the ground, that's when you get that initial big gust of wind. That's where we can see the 70 and 80 mile per hour gusts. And another thing that we consider with the signatures on radar is if that's happening in a large scale, you're going to see the echoes on the radar begin to bow out. That is a strong indication of really damaging potential winds into the region. Amelia? And I love what you said where it's not a microburst, it's a macroburst. Burst. I mean, driving around town uh, Saturday after those storms went through on into Sunday, you could hear generators humming. I mean, it looked like a tornado went through the area because as Ryan was saying, those wind speed that we saw with those storms was uh, kind of the strength that you do see with a low-end tornado. So again, just to reset here really quickly, we have a tornado warning in effect for Loudoun County. That includes Leesburg. This is going to go until 515. This is a radar-indicated tornado warning meaning that the radar is picking up on the rotation. But seeing as how close this is to the radar site, this is a storm you want to take very seriously. But in general, this entire line of storms moving through the area is something that you want to take seriously. My parents uh, up in Frederick County saying as the storm moved through, it went from day to nighttime out there. I, I hear some binging. I don't know if you can hear that. I think we just got a new, uh, no, this is actually not a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning. But basically, this line of storms, this line of severe storms is moving toward the east anywhere from about 30 to 55 miles an hour, producing a ton of lightning wind gusts anywhere from 60 to 70, potentially even upwards of 80 miles an hour out there. Ryan is tracking this storm as it moves towards the east. Some impact times for you. Germantown at about 530, Gaithersburg at about 545, Manassas at about 6 o'clock, uh, Bethesda right around 615, and the district right around 640. So over the next couple of hours, we're going to see this line moving through the area, producing a lot of damage, but you still have time to prepare. Make sure you're charging up your devices. As Ryan said, he had a great tip to put some ice in a cooler, so if you do lose power, you can transfer some things from your freezer into that cooler. Also, turn the air conditioner in your home down a few degrees so you can get your home a little bit cooler, and that cool cool will last a little bit longer into the night if you do happen to lose power. So we still have a tornado warning in effect for Loudoun County, including Leesburg and areas just off to the west. This goes until 515. We also have a severe thunderstorm warning for the same area that's going until 515. Looking at the rainfall rates, too, I think that's another good point to bring uh, into this picture. Not only are we dealing with strong winds, but areas like Martinsburg reported uh, over an inch and a half of rain as the storm moved through the area. And there's some good news here. The National Weather Service is trimming down this tornado warning once again because when this tornado warning was just issued, it was a very long track that went all the way back into parts of Fauquier County. We now have a tornado warning that's mainly around Leesburg, around 15, including downtown Leesburg, the wineries, the vineyards that are out there. This tornado warning going until 515. And, of course, you never want wind damage anywhere, but when you think about the agriculture that is damaged by winds, of course, another kind Kind of a layer of something that's unfortunately unfolding out there tonight. Uh, this line, again, is producing severe thunderstorm warnings up around Westminster, down through Mount Airy, Gaithersburg. That continues along 15, down through the Warrenton area. Manassas, you're not under a severe thunderstorm warning yet, but you will be. We'll also see this line continue into the district, into Prince George's County, into Southern Maryland over the next one to two hours out there. So as we look at uh, kind of what to do tonight, what to expect, wind damage, power outages will be 
happening if they haven't already in spots. Wind damage has already happened. I should say power outages are highly likely. This line impacts the D.C. metro area from now until about 7 o'clock. Again, prepare for derecho-like damage, and tomorrow is looking really nice. This weather is out of here. But here is the latest. We have a tornado watch out there. I'll let Ryan uh, handle the graphics there, but we do have a tornado uh, watch for the entire area. This is going to go until 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, Ryan, do you have any new information coming in about the a tornado warning that we're seeing. I still see that it's in effect for Leesburg for about another 14 minutes. Here you can see that tornado warning. Now, the one that was in Carroll County, that's no longer a tornado warn storm. That tornado warning uh, has been allowed to expire, but we still do have a tornado warning in effect until 515. So a watch, everybody here in yellow, means that a tornado is possible. A warning means that a tornado is likely happening. So think of it uh, in like the sense of baking. Watch means you have all the ingredients to make something. A warning means that it has been made. So this is a radar-indicated tornado warning for Leesburg for another 13 minutes as this storm moves toward the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. So if you live in Leesburg, what you want to do is you want to head to your basement. If you don't have a basement, head to an interior room, something like a closet, like a bathroom, an interior room that doesn't have windows is most ideal out there. What Ryan is doing up right now, what Ryan is doing right now is bringing up the speed of the storm. So we're looking uh, at the couplet here. What we're trying to see is where the winds are coming toward and away from the radar, indicating the most likely area that we're seeing the rotation out there. And I believe what Ryan is uh, focused on right here is this couplet right here. So Hughesville, Woodburn, you're really under the gun. You need to head to your basement right now. Uh, you can see this is right along 15, right along the battlefield. Parkway. We have Dry Mill Road there. Uh, looking back to the west, this is by, uh, you have Harmony Church Road out in this area. So if you're in this track or you're anywhere near this area, okay. you need to take this storm very seriously. I see that we have photojournalist Nick Leinbach out uh, driving around, surveying some damage out there. I mean, the skies are simply looking ominous. They're looking angry out there tonight as this line of storms uh, continues to move through the area at a pretty good clip. And it's not just that tornado warning that we have until 515, but we also have a severe thunderstorm warning for this entire line that's impacting our entire area or will impact our entire area. Here's Nick right now uh, driving in the Storm Team 4x4. I don't know if we have Nick on the phone, but I know that he was out in the Winchester area as the storm moved through and stated that he has never seen any uh, the skies in, in the kind of the way that, that he had before the storm moved through. You can still see, you know, kind of the clouds after this rain has moved through back in this area. A lot of folks out there on the road, so many uh, workers let the employees go, let their employees go early so they could get home and beat these storms, just hunker down. And hopefully, you know, folks are able to get home. If you can avoid travel as this line moves through this evening, this is going to be the way to go. This hasn't even moved through Washington yet. So over the next couple of hours, things are going to continue to stay very, very tense here with our weather. But I can't say this enough. You still have time to prepare. If you're in Fauquier County, if you're in Manassas, if you're in Southern Prince William, if you're in the district, Arlington, Alexandria, most of Montgomery County, up around the Baltimore area, down through Southern Maryland, this line has yet to move through. So again, make sure you're charging up your devices. Make sure you're preparing for a power outage. Know your plan. If you have loved ones or you have friends in the area, make sure you're reaching out, letting them know that we do have severe weather moving through the area that is going to be producing significant wind damage in some locations. Everybody has the equal chance for severe weather tonight. It's not like Southern Maryland has a better chance than parts of Northern Virginia. Everybody has an equal chance for seeing uh, severe storms tonight. We're going to head out to Germantown where we're live right now looking at the situation going there, uh, going on there along 270 right now. And I believe this is Nick uh, driving around. Ryan, you have something that you want to jump in, some new information coming in. Yeah, I wanted to update folks. In Loudoun County, we are not uh, seeing a tornado anymore. The tornado warning has been dropped for Loudoun County. That's a good thing. However, we're still dealing with winds, folks, that are gusting anywhere between 50 and potentially 80 miles per 
per hour. It's not rotation necessarily. These are straight line winds that are going to be causing some damage. They're going to be taking some trees down. You're going to be losing power in sections of Loudoun County, stretching into Montgomery County and Poolsville. This is the activity that has our attention right now in the Storm Team 4 Weather Center. All of these boxes in orange, in orange, excuse me, stretching from Warrenton and uh, the Piedmont of Virginia northward and northeastward into sections of Maryland. This line is moving rapidly anywhere between 50 and possibly even 60 miles per hour. That's the forward motion of this line of storms. There's a lot of energy in the atmosphere between here, where the storms are currently, and Washington. We had the heat, we had the humidity from earlier today, mm -hmm. and those two things together will help to keep this line strong or potentially make it even stronger as it moves towards 95 and our eastern suburbs. Not seeing any no rotation right now, not dealing with any tornado war warnings at the moment, but we've had reports of wind gusts anywhere between 70 and 80, close to hurricane strength across Frederick County, Maryland, causing damage, considerable uh, amounts of power loss potentially with this as it moves off towards the east. And this stretch of weather has very heavy rain in it. It's going to cause a very difficult condition if you're going to be driving. Folks were let out early from work and they're moving off uh, from the district towards the west. If you are, you're going to be encountering that very heavy rain. It's brief, but the winds that are associated with this line, they stretch all the way from Leesburg really and pretty much down 15 and 29 towards Warrenton and moving towards central Virginia. Virginia. This is going to be impacting the western suburbs of D.C., the immediate suburbs, Fairfax, right here showing up on the map. Prince William County is going to be dealing with these very gusty winds between now and about 545. The district mm -hmm. itself, we're looking at about 6 o'clock for these winds and these storms to approach the region very rapidly. And uh, Amelia is going to join us now with some more information. Yeah, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning in. This includes Baltimore, the city, the county, parts of northern Anne Arundel County, back through Howard County. This is going to go until 545. A couple of things to pass along. Um, we're seeing new details about the Pink concert coming in. Um, we'll pass that along. We're also streaming live on all of our platforms right now. So you can watch us anywhere. If you have family that maybe doesn't have the traditional cable, you can let them know. Uh, we're everywhere right now talking about these storms going on. We have live drone video uh, coming out of Merrifield uh, area in Fairfax right now. BJ Forte uh, has his drone up in the sky sky surveying this. I mean, what an incredible shot, Ryan. Look at that. The cloud formation there as these storms make their way towards his location. Uh, we're seeing some storms likely uh, approaching ahead of the main line where he is or maybe just off to his east. But uh, again, for the most part, the nasty storms have yet to move into parts of Fairfax County. So again, that was BJ with his drone video. We also have Amy Cho alive on the phone. Uh, Amy, talk to me about where you are right now, what you're seeing. Has the storm moved through your area yet? Are you seeing any damage? Uh, kind of set the scene for us. Hi, Amelia. So I am in the car with photojournalist Evan Carr. Um, we are in the Germantown area about to get on to 270. Uh, you can see those pictures in front of you there on the screen. Um, it's just starting to rain. We're seeing a few rain droplets, but it is definitely looking very gloomy and ominous. Uh, the sky is very dark, as you can see. Uh, we got those clouds rolling in. Uh, and the thing that struck me earlier as I was on 270, uh, is it, well, the traffic, you know, it's, it's rush hour. People are, are trying to get home. A lot of them were let out of work early. But the thing is, many of them were stuck on 270. Traffic was moving very slowly, as it typically does during any rush hour in the D.C. area. Um, and we're hearing all those warnings, you know, get off the road, seek shelter. But for the folks that are in their cars on the highway, a lot of them really have nowhere to go. Um, so they may want to consider just getting off at the nearest exit if possible so they are not stuck sitting in their car uh, waiting on the highway once that storm hits. Uh, the wind definitely, again, as I said, starting to pick up. Uh, we're seeing a few rain droplets, expecting uh, the brunt of that to come through here uh, any moment now. Uh, like I said, we are about to get onto 270, headed north uh, towards the Frederick area or that they're already starting to see that storm. Uh, we will continue to keep you posted on the conditions we see uh, throughout the evening. And, and Ryan's going to uh, join us now with some timing for the storms as they make their way through the D.C. metro area. Uh, Ryan, these storms, you know, depending on where they are, they are they're moving anywhere from about uh, 30 to 55 miles an hour. So I'm going to time this out at about 45 miles an hour. That will also give folks a little bit of a lead time. Uh, and, and something to point out, I'm sure you'd notice this, this little cell out ahead of the storm. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens with this radar as these little cells, you know, does the line just kind of encapsulate it? Does that potentially lead? 
lead to a little mm. bit of spin. But I'm going to ignore those those cells out ahead of this, and I'm going to time this out for the D.C. metro area uh, for you here. And we're looking at the line of the storms right now moving right across Loudoun County. This is our radar dome out at Dulles Airport, the National Weather Service radar. And we have this area we call the cone of silence because the beam goes out mm. from the radar dome. We not, don't necessarily know exactly what's happening right there, but the further you get from the radar beam, the better likelihood and the higher likelihood of getting some really good data and be able to time this out. So Reston, we're looking at 522, our western suburbs of D.C., northwestern suburbs as well, Gaithersburg at 530. In D.C. itself at 550, we have been timing it out and talking about the 6 o'clock hour as pretty much the, uh, the time frame here for the district itself, the immediate suburbs. There's a concert at Nats Park tonight. There are lots of things happening, including folks on the road trying to get home from work. There are gusty winds, and we can see those signatures showing up on radar. When you have this bow, this little curve that shows up on the radar, that is an indication of very heavy wind. We've got lots of air across much of the metro right now that is very hot. We're still holding in the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees. We've got tremendous amounts of humidity in the atmosphere. Both of those things act as fuel to make the storms even stronger. So they're going to continue to push off towards the east rapidly. We're looking at wind gusts anywhere between 50 and 70 miles per hour, even higher in some locations north of D.C. And with that, you can expect to see some trees come down. We've had tremendous amounts of rain, actually, over the last several days. And all that rain does is make the soil moist and makes it a little bit easier for the trees to be able to get uh, to come down here with those very gusty winds. So, yes, you're going to see some wind damage. We had winds anywhere between 70 and 75 miles per hour last Saturday. And if your neighborhood experienced some pretty heavy damage like mine did in Arlington, chances are we're going to see a repeat of this action over the next hour or so. Power outages can be expected. Maybe a tornado. We've seen a couple of reports on radar of tornadoes and spin in the atmosphere, but no confirmations whatsoever of tornadoes hitting the ground just yet. And hopefully we can uh, knock on wood or fake wood and uh, not see any tor tornadoes here this evening. So if you are under a tornado warning, absolutely positively seek shelter. Into the basement if you have one. Into the interior room if you do not have a basement. Make sure you are covering yourself with a blanket, perhaps get into the bathtub, and that will allow you and your family to stay safe. We've had reports of hail coming in here. I have seen ping pong sized, and that's uh, getting close to about a golf ball. So almost two inch size hailstones coming out of some of these storms, and that's going to cause damage to cars. That's going to break windows and shatter things, and be mindful of that threat if you have a vehicle and it has not stormed at your house yet. If you can take a second and perhaps put it in the garage or park it in a location that will give it a little bit of shelter, you could save yourself some trouble and some damage. We have winds that are typically at about 60 miles per hour in our severe thunderstorms across the D.C. region in the summertime. When we get up to 70, that's when considerable damage can take place. That's what we saw last Saturday. There were trees all around us here in northwest Washington that were littered and scattered with those 70 mile per hour winds, and that brought a lot of power lines down. If you are in an area where tree branches or trees have fallen and power lines are down, make sure you treat that line, whether or not it looks to you to be live, uh, make sure you treat it as a live line, stay away, make sure you're calling the authorities, and keep yourself and your family safe, and of course, do not drive over any of those power lines should they come down. Severe thunderstorm warnings up. All of these areas in orange, we see a line of storms that stretches from Pennsylvania through much of uh, central Maryland and our northwestern sections of the viewing area into Loudoun County, and this is all moving off towards the east. It's not going to rain for a long period of time, but it's the gusty wind that's going to be coming with this and tremendous amounts of lightning. One of the recommendations we always make on Storm Team 4 is after the storm passes, Give it about 30 minutes. Do not go outside until the storm has passed for about 30 minutes. That'll give you an opportunity for you and your family to stay safe and away from any lightning. Amelia has some updates now. On yeah, we storms. just have a new severe thunderstorm warning, and we're going to go right to Julie Carey, who's live in Haymarket. Uh, now, this severe thunderstorm warning likely until about 545. But I want to head out to Julie because I'm here. Look at the pictures. Look at that torrential rain. Julie, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, this just hit a few minutes ago. That's Heather Hutchinson on the camera right there. We've been watching this front come in. We are at I-66 and Route 15 right here in Haymarket. A lot of people know the Sheets mm -hmm. gas station there. That's where we're set up. And uh, just, just minutes ago, an 
absolute downpour. We're getting thunder and lightning right now and very high winds. I mean, no sign of wind such yet that there would be damage, but the flags, the trees, they are whipping. So just an absolute deluge right here. We'd seen you know, a very dark front line come through. It was almost like night before the sky opened up and it started to fall poor and and right now i mean i'm seeing flashes of lightning every few seconds you might be able to hear that thunder over my mic right now um it's a little striking how many people are still out in this we're right across the street from the walmart and we as we change positions to take cover still a lot of people out shopping uh didn't heed the warnings earlier today uh, and this uh, Sheets gas station full right now with people taking cover. But again, just a lot of lightning right now. Very heavy rain out in Haymarket. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of people still out on the road making their way home. So sure hope everybody stay safe and mindful. Yeah, absolutely, Julie, especially because I feel like we, this is a storm where we've actually get, been able to give people significant lead time. I think if we can go to our tower cam right now, we're getting great pictures of the storm moving. And while we're working on that, here are the severe thunderstorm warnings out there. The latest severe thunderstorm warning includes most of Prince William uh, County down through Stafford, Warrington, Fauquier County. There you see the National Cathedral raindrops starting to hit our camera there. I want to pass along some uh, damage reports that I'm hearing in Montgomery County around the New Windsor area. Transformers down with wires by a house. We have numerous reports coming in from emergency management in Montgomery County of trees down. Emergency management reporting just absolutely torrential rain with this line of storms. Stanton registered a wind gust of 68 miles an hour. Also back to our west, back around the mountains, we had reports of golf ball size hail there, which is hail almost two inches in diameter. So again, this is a severe line of thunderstorms that we're tracking, moving through the area. Uh, Ryan is looking at the latest on his phone. He's saying mm -hmm. Germantown is absolutely going to get hammered out there. And, yep. and Ryan, if you, let's, let's, I, I kind of want you to join me here, and we mm -hmm. can just talk about what we're seeing on the radar uh, here together. Because, I mean, you're looking at what well, we, we look at bows, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I, Doug always uses this reference. Yeah, like when an archer, you're kind of pulling the bow back, right? Yep. And the more you see that curvature, the more tension that is producing on the bow. And it's that same thing with what we're seeing right here. So kind of talk to me about what you were looking at kind of behind the scenes on your radar. Yeah, as this storm line begins to move towards the east, Amelia, it looks like it's going to encounter a lot of energy in the mm -hmm. atmosphere, and it's really starting to strengthen. Mm -hmm. So Gaithersburg, Germantown, folks that live along the 270 corridor in Montgomery County, this line of wind is actually going to get stronger and move towards you between now and about 530, and you're going to see gusts anywhere between 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour. We're already getting reports of power lines down. Down, some trees have fallen, and all of this activity is moving rapidly from west to east. It is really raining heavily across Loudoun County. We can see showing up here on uh, our tower cameras the darkening sky from the very thick clouds that are producing these exceptionally strong storms. No tornadoes at the moment. That is a good thing, mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of folks that are driving home right now, mm -hmm. and it is going to be a tough ride on 66 if right. you're coming out of uh, Manassas and moving towards uh, Fairfax, or if you're in Fairfax mm -hmm. and going to be driving Driving westward, you're going to have some really heavy ponding on the roads yeah. and potential impacts travel-wise. And I think another thing to point out here, Ryan, is, is folks that are in parts of D.C., into parts of Arlington, up around the spur, Bethesda, getting rain right now. This is not the main event. This is just a little downpour that's moving through. The main event still back into parts of northern Virginia, upper Montgomery County. Um, now, when we talk about the derecho, people are saying our, this is not a derecho. No. But that is going to, that's kind of a, it has to meet specific criteria for it to be a derecho. Could we see wind damage? I'm already hearing a lot coming out of Stanton, mm -hmm. of the wind gusts there, of hail there. We could see damage like that. So were you, uh, we have a new information, I think, coming in uh, from Sean and Erica. Uh, yeah, Amelia, we're just getting told about power outages in Loudoun. Dominion reporting some 20,000 customers without power right now. you got to remember, one customer may mean one building. So that can encompass a lot of people. So Loudoun, Dominion right now reporting 20,000 customers 
without power. And I think uh, Amelia and Ryan have been mentioning throughout the afternoon that we could see even more power outages. Right. And, and if you are losing power or you think you might lose power, just a reminder, you can follow everything and get updates on the latest severe weather. We're streaming on all of our platforms. You can find us on, on Facebook. You can find us wherever you need so that you will get the very latest information. Ryan? Sean, I wanted to point out we are dealing with severe thunderstorm warnings at this hour from now through about 5 30 and pushing towards 6 o'clock actually for the immediate metro. If you're in D.C. right now and you're watching us and the rain is falling, this is not the line of storms that has our attention and has our concern. It's just a couple of showers right now into Arlington and Falls Church. This is going to be moving rapidly away. It's the line behind it that's going to be bringing the really gusty wind. We can see that echo showing up here on radar. When you see that little curvature showing up, that is a strong indication of a strengthening storm and a storm that has really strong wind. So I'm concerned about Montgomery County right now. You're going to be dealing with this gusty wind in Gaithersburg. You're going to be dealing with it in Germantown and Rockville. These are areas. Looking towards the immediate metro, folks in Fairfax at 539, about 10, 20, 20 minutes or so. Woodbridge at 545. D.C. between 550 and 6 o'clock. If you know anybody that lives on the eastern side of town, maybe give them a buzz. Tell them to be mindful of the weather. Watch the sky. And of course, course, make sure your phones are charged. If you can continue to do that, if you lose power, it'll be helpful to get you through the storm. And our app here, the Storm Team 4 and uh, NBC Washington app is a great tool to keep informed. You can see our radar and use the tools we do to keep informed of these changing conditions. There is a lot of heavy rain, but it's a narrow band. We're only talking about 7 to 12 miles of really heavy rain. And when it's moving at 50 miles per hour, well, it'll pour for a little bit and then rapidly move to the east. All of 95 is going to be impacted between now and 6 o'clock. It's going to be a tough go on the major roads, the major highways in our region between now and 6. In Annapolis by 6.15, you'll be dealing with this weather. And uh, Fairfax at 5.35 and around 6 o'clock for the district itself. We have this line. Once it comes through, we are going to continue to monitor things. The storm threat isn't necessarily over yet because we're watching on radar towards West Virginia and even over uh, West Virginia and Ohio there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So this initial line, as it pushes to the east, yes, it's going to give us gusty winds. Yes, it's going to cause a lot of uh, potential issues for trees and power lines, but we're not done with the storms. More activity off to our west. That's going to continue to push into the area. We're going to be dealing with the potential for some flooding because we picked up tremendous amounts of rain last night. And uh, this rain, as it pushes in the storms, as it moves to the east, with these winds could work in tandem with the soils being wet, and that only exacerbates the situation and can bring trees down much easier. Last weekend, on Saturday, when we had that line of severe weather come through, 70 mile per hour gusts. And if you were dealing with cleanup still today, seven days, eight days later, um, well, there's going to be another cleanup to do because of these winds that are marching through and to our east. If you're inside uh, and watching us and you get under a tornado warning, we're not dealing with them right now. You have to seek shelter, absolutely, and we're going to keep watching Storm Team 4 radar for any potential rotation in the atmosphere. But it's the strong winds that are going to rapidly approach, and it's already moving into Fairfax County, moving from Loudoun County towards the east. Poolsville and western sections of Montgomery County, we're going to see this continue to move off to eastern sections. If you live in Olney, these very gusty winds are headed your way. If you live into Howard County, we're going to see some very gusty winds. All of this action will move towards the eastern suburbs, Prince George's County, and then into southern Maryland from 6 o'clock onward. It's the western suburbs right now that are under the gun, and it's going to continue to be a very, very changeable storm because the conditions will rapidly deteriorate, and then it'll improve. And then more shower and storm activity is a possibility. Amelia is going to jump in. She has some updates on some yeah. of our watches and warnings. Some updates to the severe thunderstorm warnings in Virginia. And we talk about, you know, obviously the seriousness of a tornado warning. However, I want you to take these severe thunderstorm warnings and treat them as if they were tornado warnings because 
The National Weather Service is saying wind gusts with these storms, especially right now into parts of northern Virginia, up into Montgomery County, western parts of the county, likely have wind gusts with them of 80 miles an hour, potentially approaching 80 miles an hour. So when you have a severe thunderstorm warning tagged like that, that is going to be a lot of damage that is produced. So that is going to be, uh, again, uh, damage that's in line with a low-end tornado. So um, destructive storm is what's being used for the city of Manassas, Clifton, Burke, and Annandale. Uh, radar indicated, of course, are the winds, but what Ryan is zooming in on right here is really where we're likely seeing the strongest winds. Again, if you get wind gusts at 80 miles an hour, you're going to have trees down in your neighborhood. There will be power outages. Uh, and here are the impact times for you. I mean, this storm is moving quickly toward the east at 55 miles an hour now. Uh, Reston, you're under the gun already. Manassas Park, you have a few minutes to prepare. Gaithersburg at about 535, so about another 10 minutes. Fairfax at about 545. McLean at about 550. And we have actually, speaking of Leesburg, uh, speaking of Northern Virginia, we have Nick on the phone right now, a photojournalist who drove out and around the Winchester area. Nick, talk to us about where you've been and what you've seen out there on this stormy Monday evening. Yeah, Amelia, so I have been out on the 81 corridor for about an hour, so I'm now back in towards Leesburg. Mm -hmm. We're on the Harry Bird Highway coming back into town now. Uh, we are on the trailing edge of these storms, so the storms passed over me, you know, torrential downpours, terrific winds, take shelter if you're outside. And, and Nick, I just want to jump more. in here real quick. We have Nick's shot, but it's frozen right now. So that's kind of where we're at. So uh, continue mm -hmm. talking about, you know, what you're saying. Just know that uh, we're hearing you, but we're not exactly uh, having, uh, able to provide our viewers with a steady stream of, of what you're seeing right now. I can kind of see your windshield wipers are still going, but uh, get back to, you know, what, what, where you're, what you're seeing out there right now. Of course. So I'm back on Harry Bird Highway in Leesburg, south of town, coming towards the Dulles Greenway. We do have steady rain. The wind has tapered off a little bit. But what's really fascinating me is the lightning ahead of me. There is, it's like the 4th of July with lightning strikes out here just popping off in every direction. Do be warned that that is prolific in this area right now. Um, it, yeah, thanks so much, Nick. I mean, the lightning that we're seeing, the torrential rain, I mean, you've reported that. I've seen that being reported from emergency management, just how heavy the rain is. If folks aren't getting the winds, they're getting the rain or they're getting the rain and the winds. Uh, stay safe out there, Nick. Keep us updated with what you're seeing. Great work out there today. We also want to go to Julie Carey and Haymarket. Uh, when we last checked in, Julie, it was a deluge out there. I took note of you mentioning you were surprised at how many people were still out and about on this evening, uh, given the warning that, you know, staying off of the roads is the way to go. We can kind of see flooding there in that parking lot as well. Yeah, and it hasn't changed much since I talked to you last. It was about 20 minutes ago that things really let loose out here after just, you know, watching for a long time those big dark clouds kind of roll in from the west. Um, I'd say the rain has let up just slightly from the first moments of the storm. And, in fact, just in probably the last couple of minutes, I'm seeing a little less lightning, hearing a little less thunder. Uh, but not long ago, I mean, it was... It was coming about every few seconds, uh, just a lot of flashes up in the sky. Um, the wind has also tapered just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether things are calming down here or if there's more coming behind it. Uh, but, you know, still some really nasty weather here in Haymarket. You're looking at, uh, through the camera, I think, right now at uh, Route 55. We're at the intersection of 5515, just off I-66, so a lot of people are familiar mm -hmm with that area. We're set up at the Sheets gas station. But um, yeah, like you said, still a lot of people surprisingly on the road right now. And, you know, going and I have to say, Julie, the good news is, is you're questioning, business. are things calming down? Are they picking back? The good news is, is things for you are calming down. And I think this is kind of a good uh, way to kind of show folks what they could or could not be dealing with. You're saying that you didn't really deal with a lot of wind, but you were dealing with heavy rainfall, prolific lightning. So uh, again, there's going to be some areas that just get annihilated with strong 
strong wind gusts. Thankfully, Haymarket doesn't appear to be one of those. You're still dealing with some rain, but the worst of the storm uh, has moved out of the area. I want to bring in our anchors, uh, Erica and Sean, right now with kind of what you guys have been hearing. I know you were talking about already power outages coming in, and those numbers are only going to be going up. Absolutely, Amelia. We just learned a short time ago, Dominion, Virginia was reporting 20,000 customers uh, without power right now in loud mentioned that, that just one person being, one customer being out could be an entire building, that could be an apartment building, it could be some sort of an office building, uh, but people need to be aware as their power goes out that they can still continue to monitor the weather situation because we're streaming our coverage on all of our platforms. That's right, so as the storm starts to move east and you lose us on your TVs in your living room, you can stream us on your phone, you can watch us on Facebook even. So if you lose us, then you can still check your phone, make sure that all of your gear is powered up. We've also got some mm. impressive images on I-270 on Shady Grove Road. So that's, this is some of the rain that's coming in. Mm. Um, as Amelia said, let's not get too stuck on whether or not there's a tornado watch or warning in the area because these mm. severe thunderstorms can do just the same amount of damage with the winds that they pack. Absolutely. Amy Cho is up there on I-270 in the Shady Grove road area. Amy joins us now by the phone. Amy, kind of describe what, what's going on where you are right now in, in, in Montgomery County, Maryland. Hi, Sean. Yeah, the storm has really picked up since we last spoke a short time ago. As you can see, very low visibility, heavy, heavy rain. Uh, it's difficult to read street signs until they're only a few mm. feet away. Uh, lots of thunder and lightning, as Julie was also just describing where she is. A uh, short time ago, we actually uh, drove under in uh, a bridge, an underpass, and we saw about four cars that had just parked under that bridge to seek shelter from the rain. They decided that they were going to wait it out there. They weren't going to try to tough it out in these conditions. Uh, we also saw a number of disabled vehicles on the side of the road. Again, we are on 270 headed northbound, uh, approaching the Urbana area now, uh, where the storm was starting to roll in earlier. Uh, again, very, very low visibility out here. Uh, cars are having to drive uh, very slowly. But the thing is, it is rush hour in the D.C. area. Uh, we've seen very heavy traffic at times, so cars are often stuck with nowhere to go. Uh, would recommend possibly getting off at an exit if you need to, so you're not stuck on the highway in these conditions. Uh, that is the very latest. Uh, we're going to continue to monitor these roads uh, throughout the evening. Back to you. Amy, I'm just curious, uh, what are the skies? We can see the images right now, and they, and they probably look a lot better than they are actually because the windshield wipers are going. What do the skies look out there? Look like out there? Are, are, are the clouds thick? Give, it, give us a description of what you're seeing. Yeah, it's very dark. And yes, the cameras do make it look a lot clearer than what we're seeing in person. Uh, yeah, the, the sky is very dark. It's, it's difficult to see. Uh, it feels like it's much later than only 5.30 in the evening. Uh, so making, making this drive a lot tougher uh, than, than, would, than we would like. Right, and that's that we are still seeing uh, far fewer cars on the roads because the federal government had authorized workers to leave offices by 3 o'clock this afternoon ahead of these storms moving in. They started to move in, and they started to move in very quickly. Our Amy Cho, who's live out there on the road, you guys be careful, and we will check back in with you. Uh, this is a live picture now coming in from Capitol Hill. We were hearing the raindrops coming in over our studio. Um, that's just a... a a, a taste, a sampling of what is to come, because while this is going to move very quickly, this has still not reached us. If you are in the D.C. metro region, it's coming our way fast. Um, we've been also monitoring the situation for all of you Pink fans who are planning to head down for the concert tonight at Nats Park. Starts at 7 p.m. We just checked in. The concert is still on. We are told they are monitoring the weather situation. Uh, it, it seems like storms have rolled in during concerts over the last big concerts over the last two days. We saw what happened with the Beyonce concert last night out at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. We are keeping an eye on this severe weather tonight for everyone uh, planning to head down to Nats Park today to watch the Pink concert. All right, Dominion, very quickly, we've got an update now, 30,000 customers. Uh, Dominion, Virginia, reporting 30,000 customers in the Loudoun area without power. Again, if you lose us on your TV, you can stream us on whatever platform you choose. Even if that's Facebook, you can stream us through your social media apps as well. Let's get back over to Ryan on the big board and what we're seeing.
And right now, Erica, taking a look, we are under the gun across Montgomery County. Much of Montgomery County experiencing wind gusts anywhere between uh, 50 and even 60 miles per hour. We've got some uh, video footage right now from Ashburn as well. And this line that stretches from northern and north central Maryland across much of Loudoun County, Montgomery County, into Fairfax County as we speak has tremendous amounts of lightning with it. And with folks on the road, there are really amount, heavy amounts of rain that are coming across down right now on 270. Much of the Beltway will be impacted between now and about 615. If you live in Fairfax, 536 for the center of these storms to push in. 555 in the district itself. Our eastern suburbs of Washington, Oxon Hill and Bowie, we're looking at after 6 o'clock for these storms to impact you. We have really heavy wind across much of Montgomery County impacting Olney, and this is moving off towards the east. Northern Prince George's County will see some of this wind activity very shortly. We're talking about 50, 60 mile per hour gusts, even more so in a few locations. We could see isolated gusts upward of 70 miles per hour. That's what we had a couple of Saturdays ago, folks, that brought the severe weather to the region. So you can anticipate trees coming down with this gusty wind. We've had tremendous amounts of rain, and that rain helps to saturate the soil, and it makes it easier for the trees to fall. Right along 650, moving towards Clarksville, Savage, Maryland, and South Laurel, you're going to be seeing a lot of this activity shortly. But from Gaithersburg, heading into Potomac, and then Bethesda, this is where we're going to continue to monitor this severe thunderstorm. And as it moves towards the east, anywhere between 40 and 60 miles per hour, there are really big pockets of wind in this system. Manassas, we've uh, heard reports right now of lots of power outages in Manassas and in those locations. They're dealing with heavy winds and gusty rain, right, or with some rain right now. It's all moving to the east. And if you live into Fairfax, if you live into portions of uh, Prince William County, you're going to see this activity right now through about 615. And uh, Erica has some more updates for us. Hey Ryan, Pete Perringer with Montgomery County Fire and Rescue tweeting that they are working to get a fire under control at Frederick Avenue and Folks Corner Avenue in Gaithersburg. Uh, they're not quite sure what it is, but they're thinking it's a transformer. Mm. So this is probably uh, similar scenes that we may be seeing across the area as